Kaladins, right? But we haven't seen this happen yet. Welcome to the Raffo Read Along! Today with preview chapters 5 and 6, we've gotten one of these as a reading from Brandon before, but big things happen in the next. First, thank you to Doug, Matt, Steve, Data Gremlin, Alec, Craig, Scotty, James, Dalinar's Butt, Moochie, Chris, Meethy, Carone, Gallant, Aegis, and the Son of James, and everyone else for their support. Also, thank you for watching! We just hit 13,000 subscribers, which is very exciting! Now, chapter 5 epigraph. Maybe it's not Kaladin writing these. Sure, he's working on on becoming the Cosmere's first therapist, but a philosopher and a historian, he is not. And here's the face creeping into Shallan's drawings. A singer. When it happened at Urethiru, it was an unmade. This time, it's also an unmade. They managed to recruit 12 honor spren. Plus, notum. Kinda. He's at least going to try to help out with the other conscientious objectors. You can be a good person and say no. He says that when Adolin came to rescue him, in that moment he knew that honor lived. Kellett comes by and she sketches him. She does a real good job. So much so that he questions, do you often draw upon fortune? I excuse me? How often do you glimpse into the spiritual realm, then manifest it in your art? <laughs> so Shallan already kind of has a way into the spiritual realm. Maybe this will be easier than I thought. <laughs> She's basically pulling an 11th medal with her drawings, showing a different version of who the person could be. Side note, I actually figured out how to do Malatium in my metal vials. Check out my merch store in the description. Kellick says it might have something to do with her double bond. They do store more energy. Actually, the more I think about it, the more similarities there are between covalent and Cosmere bonding. Chemistry is just manipulating connection between molecules. Oh. Chapter 6 epigraph. Definitely not Kaladin or Zeth writing this, given that they're probably the two witnesses of whatever happens in Shinovar. Honestly, it almost seems like Chris, or maybe Yasna. Now that the winds and heralds have vanished, what? And now we get our first previously unreleased chapter. The beginning of Kaladin and Zeth's buddy cop journey. Or maybe less of a buddy cop journey and more therapy field trip. Dalinar wants to go on a little field trip himself, and they fly out to another nearby peak. We get more info on how tower light works with radiance. Usable in your theory itself, but you can't really hold it. Tower light's an outlet, while Stormlight is a capacitor, basically. Kaladin's real mission comes to light. Fix Ishar, and prevent Shinovar from using the rest of the Honor Blades to royally screw everything up. Mention of Ishar's experiments with bringing Spren into the physical realm? Icky. But then the real, real reason Dalinar wanted to talk privately, Kaladin is named heir to Urethiru. Renarin and Adolin both refuse, so if something happens to both Dalinar and Navani, Cal becomes the leader of the Knights Radiant and King of the Tower. If he doesn't want it, there's a fourth ideal stone ward from Rira waiting in the wings. Of course, for Kaladin to become heir, he basically has to be adopted, which makes this comic all the more hilarious. They say he's a true light eyes, like the men from the old days, a man of honor and oaths, the best dad in the world. <laughs> I've seen plenty of light eyes with that reputation. None of them will ever be my dad. Oh, what is it? I just felt that someone needed a father figure. I must find them. I hate it when you do this. <laughs> In the read-along discussion on the Reactor Mag website, Drew brings up a death rattle from Way of Kings. He must pick it up, the fallen title, the tower, the crown, and the spear. He argues that's metaphorically pointing at Kaladin's rise to leadership over the Radiance? Which makes sense, but let's get a little more nitpicky here. Kaladin specifically points out that Dalinar's house glyphs are the tower and the crown. Dalinar specifically reminds us that he gave Kaladin the cloak he was wearing during the assault on the tower, which would be emblazoned with those same sigils. And most of all, Brandon has said that we haven't yet seen what Kaladin's chapter art symbol is actually referring to. A spear with a banner on it in front of a fairly ominous eclipse type thing something happening. While I totally hold space for Kaladin to be king and that death rattle to simply be a metaphor, like how I interpret the suckling child one, I'm pretty sure we're going to see this actually happen in this book, making it more literal to me. Kaladin might not get back from Shinovar in time for the Contest of Champions, which it still sounds like Dalinar's choosing himself, but he will certainly be back to pick up the pieces afterward, and maybe unite a bunch of ragtag radiants under an improvised banner tied to a spear? We're running out of readings for Wind and Truth, though from what we've got, there's still plenty of juiciness ahead. If you want to peek into the spiritual realm yourself, there linked in the description so you can read and find out.